So I'll bring up Flash. We'll just open a new Action Script 3. Um, I'm going to increase the stage size to match my uh, layout. Whoops. Thousand by. I think I did seven fifty. Yeah. Okay, so I have my stage, and uh, the first thing I want to do is I'm just gonna put in my uh, my guides, so I know where half of the stage is, and then go 150 down right here, and right there. Nope. Right there. Okay. So there's my uh, just my guides for now. I don't really need to see the rulers anymore. Uh, I'm also going to change the stage background to black. Okay. So first thing, let's do the background. So I'm going to want an object. Uh, no outline. Just like that, and we'll uh, F8 and turn it into a symbol. Call the background. So we'll go inside here, and we're going to need a couple layers. So, bottom layer, we're going to um, oh, we need to import our uh, our patterns. So I have my save file here, and I'm just going to drag my patterns just into the library All right so I'll pull the library on the screen here so I got my library I just, oops drag them right in here just keep them organized I'm going to put them in a folder called uh, I don't know, patterns and we'll grab them all throw them in there Okay, so once I have that little uh, JPEG in there, I actually have an option in my coloring down here for these bitmaps. So this is the one I know because I've looked at it before, and now I have my bitmap pattern. Um, so I want to resize it, so I'm going to go to the gradient transform tool, and click on it, zoom in a little bit. So they're a little bit bigger than I want, so I'm just going to shrink it. Uh, about about like that 50% maybe right. bam so now I have this uh, this look okay now what I want to do is, uh, I'm actually just gonna copy and then paste it into place so control shift V okay so I have two copies of it right this one I'm gonna make um, a radial gradient, right, like that. But I'm going to change the colors around here. So I have my color palette. Um, so I actually want it to go from black to black, right? But I want this black to be almost transparent, maybe 5%, like that. Okay, see how the pattern shows through? Then I want to um, I'll just move that. I'll tell you what, I'll shrink it for right now. I'll use my gradient transform. I want it to be about here. And we're going to shrink it a little bit. About like that. There we go. Now I have my, my pattern showing through. Hide my guides for a second. It's a control colon or semicolon to me. Right. So I've got it kind of showing through there. Right. And then I'm going to leave this blank layer in between for now. Um, later, I'll, I'm going to add a layer in between that has the different color options. So let's say I wanted a blue, right? So what I need to do with the blue is I'm not sure exactly yet what the best way to do. I'm thinking 
Um, right, my solid color, my blue. Oh, whoops. On the wrong layer. Lock that one. Hide it. Okay. So, if I just drop it know, around 30. Now I kind of get that color effect. So I can go from gray to color. Right. Uh, I think maybe 20 might be better. Just kind of the subtle coloring. Like that. So, anyway, I, I don't really want that yet. So I'm just going to delete that. We'll probably do the coloring with code later on. So, but anyway, that's the idea for the background. We'll go back to our scene here. And we've got kind of our background pattern. Okay, next we need another layer. We're going to do our slider. Let's bring the back. Doesn't really matter what color I use right now. But I'm just going to drag in a. Oops. Going to be. Perfect here. Make it 500 by 450. Good. Okay. And uh, right there. So I've got this guy. I'm just going to turn it into a symbol. Um, we'll call it. Yeah, left slider. All right, we'll go inside here. Okay, so. We're actually going to turn it into another symbol. This is going to be called you know, slider. We'll go inside here. Okay. So the reason I did that is because I want to reuse assets. So I don't want to remake this over and over. Right. So I'm just going to make it once and then use it for left and right slider. So anyway, um, first we want the pattern, right? The base layer of our pattern, which was the hexagons. Maybe. Maybe not. Did I not get the right? What's going on here? shrink these down again so that's way too big we're gonna maybe go oh, not quite that much but sometimes you got to zoom in or it kind of snaps to a small too small of a position uh, that looks pretty good all right so we've got that good like, um, so on the next layer what I want is I'm going to copy it actually, copy it and paste in place. Is I'm going to do the paper fill this time, right here. And the only problem is I'm going to need a blend mode, and you can't do it to um, a shape. So what we have to do is convert it to a symbol, right? I'll we'll just call it um, you know, texture, right? And in my uh, library, I'm just going to put that in my patterns folder too. Okay, so now I have it. I'm going to go with properties. Okay, and we could do a blending mode, but actually, I think just, a, just a, um, an alpha, if we go down a little bit, like 45 seems pretty good. Um, Sorry, I'm having some palette issues. Ah. Okay. 
There we go. That's fixed. So anyway, um, so see how we have the the hexagon texture, and then we also have sort of this uh, grungy fill texture. Kind of gives it more, um, I don't know, just a more interesting look. Okay, so we got those two, and then finally on top of that, we need to copy uh, our shape layer again and paste it up here. So I'm just doing that so I don't have to draw out the rectangle over and over again. This one we're actually going to have a, um, a radial gradient on, right? And this time we want to go from, uh, we'll go with this light gray to light gray, right? But we want 100% there and then this one probably, I don't know, let's try 20, right? And then let's change where it is, go kind of right to the middle here. And then I don't want to warp my circle too much. I'm going to drag it out here. It's kind of an egg shape here. I don't. Uh, maybe if we go like that. So now, kind of have that grungy look, but it fades out to a solid color. That way, if I need to um, extend. A, a different monitor resolution or size it's easy to just um, have like a little block of uh, a little symbol that will stretch whatever size the uh, the monitor resolution is right so um, so we've got kind of a slider going on um, looks okay we'll peek back here um, it's not bad. I, I think 20% is too high on here. So we'll go back into our slider here. And this guy, we just drop it down. Maybe let's just try zero. Let's see, that's not, that's too much. Uh, 10. That looks pretty good. Not exactly the same, but very similar. I might adjust my. Uh, Let's do this. I'll kind of bring that in so I can go out a little bit. Not perfect, but I, I like it. I like the way it looks. Right? It's close enough. Okay, so we've got our uh, slider shape here. Cool, so we'll go back in our left slider. And now what we need, next what we're gonna do is make this sort of um, kind of riveted section, right? So we need to draw out a shape. I want it to be, yeah, that's good. Um, Bring back our guide for a second. I don't want it too big. Maybe like that. All right, so that's about 30 pixels wide. I can live with that. Okay, so we're going to turn that into a symbol and we'll just call it um, rivet. We'll go inside here, and first thing again, we'll get our texture, just like that. Nope, oh, it keeps giving me a solid color here. Let's do our bitmap. Boom. And you'll notice that it's not quite right. So if I use this right here, I can shift it up a little bit. So I want it to be a little more even. Come on, right there. How are we doing? A little bit higher. There we go, that looks pretty good. Alright, so we have that. Bam. 
and then um, you know we might want to darken it a little bit but maybe we'll darken it this way so if I click on this guy pull in my properties here again uh, maybe we'll just do like a an overlay like that kind of darkens it and we see a little bit more texture through it that looks pretty good right okay good so we'll just lock those two and then what we want to do is we're going to want kind of some lines to define our edges okay so I'm going to get my line tool and we want a pretty light actually you know what we want well, we'll do that with color. First with the stroke, I'm thinking about two. And I don't want the round cap, I'm just gonna go with the square edge. Um, the joint doesn't matter. All right, so I have my uh, line tool. And for the color, I'm gonna do a linear gradient. And I'm gonna go from, well, maybe we'll go from there to there. Let's find out. I'm just going to drag it out just like that so it kind of fades off. I like that. Um, I'm going to bring that in. Oh, you know what? Maybe we don't want a, a cap at all. Yeah, no cap. That's what I want. So I'm seeing kind of the transition there. I actually want to move you down. And instead of going from like opacity to no opacity, what we'll do is we'll go from a lighter gray. All right, so um, change this to brightness here and just I'll bump it up. This one will bump down. Oh, I'm not actually affecting anything. Great. Make sure you have things selected. A little bit lighter here. A little bit darker there. But so now I'm gonna have this this line sort of strong and fades out. Cool. I'm gonna duplicate it. So I'll just move it down. You hold shift and an arrow key, I'll move by 10 pixels. If you just hold, if you just do the arrow key, it'll move by a couple pixels, depending on your zoom. One pixel or two. Right about there, it looks good. I'll scroll up here, this one. Just want it right on the edge, just like that. Okay, good, so I got this line kind of defining our shape. Uh, next, what we want to do actually is we're going to turn this into a symbol. So F8, call it lines. There we go. Let's go edit our lines. Okay, good. So um, next, what I want is a, a thin black line right here. So we're going to go with maybe uh, 0.5 on the stroke. And I just want to go, oh, if I do that, uh, put on a new layer here. I want it to be over. All right, I'm just going to drag it. Um, straight down to my edge. I want it to go all the way down. got this sort of gray line that might be too thin mm. yeah I think I'm gonna bump it up to a one a stroke of one there we go that's better 
Oh, one thing I want to do is with this line, I'm thinking I want to color it. Right? So I'll just use this line to help me. I'll copy it and then hide it. And we'll paste it. There we go. Now I can select this guy and I want it to be a darker color. So I don't know, maybe we'll do a like that and then we'll get rid of the black line right here. Okay good. And so I've got my dark line right there. And so what's what it looks like is it kind of gives a little lightness to the edge. I might lighten it up actually and it, and it kind of gives me a break right here. And what I'm gonna do actually I'm gonna unlock you lighten this guy this guy a little bit lighter right about there okay we'll lock you up again back to here now what I want so I have this dark line right here so I'm gonna give the kind of impression of three-dimensionality with the line I go with kind of a white line but I'm not gonna have very much opacity All right so my color right here on the line I'll drop it down to like maybe 20 uh, and then I'm gonna stroke it up to two two sounds good and just want a straight line See that very well at all, but trust me, it's good. I'm going to copy it and make another one, and it's going to move to the other side of our line about there. Boom. Good. Now let's take a look. So it might be too bright on this side, it's okay on the darker side, but the lighter edge needs to be lighter. But it kind of gives it, I don't know, you get the impression that there's a little lip or a groove there. All right? So this one right here, we'll just drop you down to 10 maybe. Yeah, still pretty bright. There we go. So it's subtle. It's a subtle thing, but you, you kind of get the uh, impression of the edge. You see it? Okay, and then lastly, I want one more line on the edge of my... Uh, so I'll just copy this guy. Paste in place. And then... Uh, whoops, that was dumb of me. Move it over. If you deselect it, it'll just merge with the other line, so that's why that was dumb of me. Okay, so I'll move it over here. I'm going to want to shrink this line. I think I'm going to go with a 0.5 stroke. And maybe like a 3. Want it kind of bright. And I'll just move it right on the edge. It's hard to see. We'll get in real close. Right about there. I don't like that. Let me make sure we go all the way up. There we go. And go all the way down. Oops. This guy needs to kind of move down. And this guy. Can't even really see that guy. Maybe we'll bump him up to like eight. Up to the top, make sure these are lined up. Just 
just like that. Okay, so shoot back out. And voila, we have our slider. That's what she looks like. So we go inside, we have our lines, which is a movie clip or a symbol, right? Lock that up. We have our rivets, which are also a symbol. And then we have our, our background pattern. All that makes up the one slider. Okay, cool. Now what we need to do is in our library, pull that in right here, and my left slider, I'm just going to duplicate it, All right? Right click and duplicate, and then we'll make our right slider. Bam. Now the reason I'm making two, okay, is if right here, I take this and I just um, and I copy it and I paste and then I modify and I transform, flip horizontally. Okay, uh, it would pretty much work except for one little thing. The rivets, the little highlight on the rivets, is um, reversed. It just causes a kind of a weird look, right? Um, it just bothers me. So, I, so that I don't want to do it that way. So what I want to do is in my right slider, right here, this guy. I'm going to reverse things. So I'm going to start with the bottom layer, modify, transform, flip horizontal like that, lock it. Top layer, again, modify, transform, flip horizontal, boom like that. You can see how the lines work on there. And then with the rivets, I'm just going to move these. I'm going to use my align palette right here. Make sure it's aligned to stage. Boop, snap it into place. And voila, I have my right sided one. So just uh, drag it from my library right here. Boom. There we go. Now I have my kind of recreated symbol. The background could be lighter, I think. So maybe all I need to do is just, uh, oops, what am I doing here? Oh, I'm on the, you gotta pay attention to what thing you're on. I'll drop this all the way to zero. It's probably not making a huge difference, but. I also kind of want the circle bigger, so I'm going to slide it over. Now the reason I did that rather than this, okay, is I want the edges to be absolutely black, right? If I just start making this bigger, they won't be absolutely black. So if I, if I have to expand the stage, uh, there'll be kind of a line. It'll be subtle, but people will see it, especially if I'm really big, right? So I want to make sure the edge is black. So right about there, and then that's lighter, right? So if I want this part to show it more, I can just drag this over. What, the only problem is it hurts the transition. You get a harsher transition here, so you don't want to do it, do it too much. Just a little, so I have a little bit more right there, right? So, here's where I'm at. That's what I've got. I'm gonna, um, yeah. I've got that. Let's compare it. Pretty good. And my background is uh, lighter here. I think there's a way to change that. I'm just not sure which or how to do it. I don't know. So anyway, I've got that recreated. Awesome. Now to conduct a little test. Right? So I have my buttons. So 
So if I just uh, go a new layer over here, boom. If I drag this guy on, we'll see how he looks, right? And I can drag this guy on. It's the same same shape, just without the layer effect, right? So we want to see which one I like better. So um, it's a little harsh in the, the coloring there. I don't know how I feel about that, but on this guy, let's see what we can do. So I'll pull over, whoops, just keep having palette issues, sorry. All right, so I have my properties. Um, what I need to do I can't just edit it directly as I want to turn it into a symbol, right? So we'll just call it you know, but, and now I have uh, my filters. So a drop shadow, just to pop it off the background, but then have to be very strong, high quality, maybe like 50. And uh, reduce the blur a little bit. Maybe Three. Scoot it over. Three. Right. Kind of not. It's getting a little fuzzy in there. Huh. Um. But yeah. So I've got that. And then let's add the glow. Use red, just like. I think I want to blur it more and reduce the strength. Maybe around 50. Kick it out. So I like that glow much better than that one. Right? Um, it's just a little nicer. I think it looks kind of closer to what I want. Maybe I'll intensify just a little. See, I like that. So I might go with something like that. Um, seems much lighter in here than in here. Not sure why. Um, but yeah. So I might be doing my buttons that way by adding the, the drop shell and glow later. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, um This is a pretty long video so far, so I think it's a good time to stop. And uh, I'll come back with more uh, layout inside of Flash. I'll do the next step, which is um, sort of this background area here. I'm going to put that together. So there we go. Whoops. Got our uh, layout kind of built. Um, see you next time.